What's up y'all, it's Mr. Canada. In this video, we're gonna learn how to write the domain and range from a word problem. This will be in the two parts. One video will focus on just discrete word problems and one video will just focus on continuous word problems. This one is gonna be dealing with specifically continuous word problems. So definitely look at the other one if you need help with discrete word problems. Let's go ahead and get started. So basically the idea is Word problems can sometimes be the hardest problems or sometimes the most work extensive problems that we can have. Not because the math in them is hard, but because sometimes we have to go through a lot of reading to get any of the information we need. You've seen some of the word problems. Sometimes the word problems can be as short as a few sentences, but sometimes they can be as long as paragraph, several sentences. And sometimes it's hard to go to them, especially if you have several of them, because then you just get tired, it gets boring and it gets kind of tedious at that point to um, work through so many. So my hope is, is that with this video, help you start building up the skills on how do we start looking at information and dissecting the information that we need in order to answer the problem given to us. So there are a little bit of, we, there are a couple of secrets to, uh, that will help you to do well with these types of word problems. Now, since we are talking about domain and range, these tips will be specifically for these types. So one of the first things that you should do, and this helps really applies to any type of word problem, is underline, circle, box, highlight, any kind of information that's given to you that either looks important or that is important to the problem that's given to us. Typically, you would want to do this first step after you give, gave the problem a read, so then you can go back and start hunting down the information. Um, the second thing is that you have to remind yourself that domain is X, basically all of your inputs, and that range is Y, all of your outputs. And it's important to look into the problem to see if they tell you that X is this or that Y is that. That's gonna be really helpful for us. And then finally, and the third thing that you wanna ask yourself is, is the problem we're working with discrete or continuous? Because that's gonna help us know how to write the answer. And sometimes that'll come, that'll make or break the difference of whether we're gonna be doing a lot of work or whether we're gonna be doing a little bit of work. So big idea is that we wanna be using the domain given to us to find the range, using the inputs to find the outputs. So let's look at a first example because that's a lot of information. And let's go ahead and see what kind of questions we can ask ourselves and what kind of work we have to do if the problem is continuous. So look at this one. The daily cost of hiring a plumber, Y, to work X hours on a repair project can be modeled using a linear function. The plumber charges a fixed cost of $80 plus an additional cost of $45 per hour. The plumber works a maximum of eight hours per day. Write the domain and range of this situation. So they're asking for domain and range so now let's go back and underline, circle any information that might be helpful to answer that question. Things that you should look out for are this. This right here is super important because this is telling you what Y is. In other words, this is telling you what the range is gonna be representing. To work X hours, so this is gonna help you find a domain. And they tell you that the plumber charges a fixed cost of $80. Basically a fixed cost is the guy shows up he charges you $80 for his services. That's not including the stuff he works per hour. And then an additional cost of $45 per hour. And then it says the plumber can work a maximum of eight hours per day. So here, X is this, Y is that. So X here they tell you is the number of hours. So this is important to establish early on because then we're gonna be looking for a set, a number of hours that we can work with. And then Y is the daily cost. So we're just gonna say shorten that and just say the cost. So now one of the things you have to look out for is we wanna look for a set number of hours that we can work with because if we don't have hours, then we can't calculate the cost. So we have to do X's first and then the Y's will come out afterwards. Um, but that was the only first two steps. The third step is to ask us, ask ourselves, is this problem continuous or discrete? Because they're mentioning time, time is always gonna be a continuous problem. So give yourself a note there, is that time always implies continuous. Because it's a free flow, right? So we wanna ask ourselves, because, 
because this is continuous, that means that our domain and our range has to do with inequalities. Remember that from our uh, domain range video from a graph. Continuous, we're always going to be using inequalities to write our answer. Now, this is a good thing because the only thing we have to do to get this problem right is find the endpoints. And once we have the endpoints, we're pretty much done with the problem here. So let's ask ourselves this question. How do we find the endpoints of this problem? Well, let's just imagine ourselves that there is a plumber coming to fix the situation. When the plumber shows up, he hasn't worked any hours yet. So that means that zero is the smallest number of hours that the guy can work, and that's just him showing up. Okay, so then we have to ask ourselves, what's the maximum amount of hours that the guy can work? Well, according to the problem, the plumber can only work a maximum of eight hours per day. So that means that the smallest number he can work is zero, and the maximum amount that he can work is eight. And right off the bat, this right here is already your domain for the problem. Now, why is that already the domain? Because we know that the smallest he can work is zero and the maximum he can work is eight. It doesn't matter how much he works in between. Sometimes he can finish sooner. Sometimes he can uh, finish just a little bit later, but no light later than eight. So this is already our minimum and our maximum number of work hours right off the bat. Now, the only thing we have to focus on now is how much is this guy charging us for zero hours of work and eight hours of work. Well, if he's charging us uh, zero hours of work, he's still charging us $80 just for his services. So even if he hasn't worked even a single hour, we're all, we have to pay him 80 just for showing up. But if he does work all eight hours, then we do have to calculate that. But how exactly do we calculate that? Well, we're basically already paying $80 because he showed up and then he, we have to pay him $45 for every hour that he works. So in this case, it's going to be eight hours. You can put this into a calculator, which in this case, I have the decimals calculator right above me. And we're just going to calculate that. So 80 plus 45 times, we're going to put parentheses because we are substituting in eight hours and then we're calculating that. In this case, it's $440. So this is going to be $440. This right here is your range for this domain. So if he works zero hours, we're still paying him 80 bucks. And if he works the entire maximum amount, we have to pay him 440. So this is barely any work that, that we have to do. And this is great. And the only reason why we were able to do so little work is because this is a continuous problem. We only have to focus on the endpoint on both sides, the smallest value and the biggest value that we are allowed to have in the problem. So it's super important that you look for something like that in these types of word problems. So let's go ahead and do one more so we can go ahead and, and, and uh, practice that inequality establishment there. So the height in inches of concrete being poured for a foundation can be found using the function f of x equals 15 plus 2.5x, where x is the number of minutes. If the concrete is poured between 5 and 10 minutes, find the domain and the range of this situation. So we're going to read it one more time. The height in inches can be found using this function. So that means that this right here is going to be height. Hopefully I spelled it right. Yeah, I did. And where X is the number of minutes. So this is, has to do something with minutes. If the concrete is be poured between five and 10 minutes, find a domain and range of the situation. Okay, so we have everything we need now. Um, how do we know whether this problem is continuous? Here they're mentioning time. They're talking about the number of minutes. So this again is going to be continuous because they are talking about minutes. Okay, so that's super important because now that means that we are allowed to write our answer as inequalities. Again, you can only write it as inequalities if the problem is continuous. 
How do we know it's continuous? Because they are talking about minutes. They're talking about time. Okay, so just like before, we want to establish the smallest number that we can use and the biggest number that we can use. In this case, that's where this piece of information comes into play. The concrete is poured between five minutes and 10 minutes. So that means that the smallest number that we can work with is five, while the biggest number we can work with is 10 minutes. Now what we need to figure out is how much concrete or the height of the concrete at five minutes and at 10 minutes respectively. So that's where this equation comes into play. At five minutes, what we're gonna do is using this equation, 15 plus 2.5x, we're going to substitute, we're gonna plug in, we're going to evaluate this five in here. We're going to replace it just like in our function notation evaluation video. So let's go ahead and take out that Desmos calculator. This is the equation we're working with, 15 plus 2.5, and we are replacing x with the number of minutes, which in this case, it's going to be five. And we are going to calculate it. So that's 27.5. So that means at five minutes, the concrete is 27.5 inches high. And I forgot to put y equals, so my bad. Now let's do the same thing for when the concrete is at 10 minutes. So again, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna take out the Desmos calculator, 15 plus, 2.5 this time in the parentheses we're putting 10 minutes and then we're calculating that it is 40 so that means that at 10 minutes the concrete is 40 inches high so now we have everything you need your domain is your x's your x was 5 and your maximum x was 10 now let's look at your range the smallest range here was 27.5 and the maximum range here was 40. And there you have it, there's your domain and there's your range. So let's go ahead and recap here. When working with word problems, it's important to read it once and then read it again, but this time underline, highlight, circle any information that's important to the question. Ask yourself, in the word problem, do they tell you what X is and what Y is? Because that's already gonna be your domain and your range for this problem. And then finally, ask yourself, is this discrete or continuous? And with this video, continuous functions always deal with minutes. So the moment they mention any sort of time, seconds, minutes, hours, days, months, years, then it'll be continuous. The hard part here is trying to establish the connection of domain into range. So that's where these equations, these numbers are gonna come into play. You have to ask yourself, what's the smallest number that I can work with and what's the biggest number that we can work with. Start with your X's first and then find your Y's after because you cannot find your Y's if you don't know what your X's are. That's super important. That's where most people get stuck is that if they don't find the X's first then finding the Y's are impossible. Well, I hope you guys learned something new today. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll try to get to you as soon as I can. If you liked the video, give this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more Algebra 1 videos. And as always, please take care and I'll see you guys next time.